Abbott, and in today's episode, I'm gonna be doing a review of the Canon EFS, that's for Crop Sensor APS-C bodies, and it's a 55 millimeter to 250 millimeter IS-STM lens. IS stands for the image stabilizer in the lens, STM re um, it refers to the focus motor. Over the last few years, Canon has done an upgrade of a number of its consumer grade zooms, and um, those include popular kit lenses like the 18 to 55 millimeter, the 55 to 250 millimeter, 18 to 135 millimeter lenses, and even the 50 millimeter f1.8. One of the main upgrades is to put the STM focus into those lenses. STM focus is, refers to stepping motor, and it's a different type of, of autofocus motor in which um, it really emphasizes smoothness. Some camera bodies, some of the newest Rebels, and then um, the EOS M3, and then also this Canon 70D, they allow for AF server, servo focus mode during video capture, which means that the, the camera will continually autofocus during video capture. Many of the older um, type of autofocus motors don't really work all that well with that. They tend to hunt a fair bit. They make a lot of noise as they kind of um, hunt back and forth trying to find focus. So SDM, it emphasizes a smooth transition from one focus point to another. And it works really well when you're capturing in that ty type of format. It does have its own limitations, which I've chronicled before, but just very quickly to point on a couple of those, one of which is, is that Although the action of the manual focus ring that's located at the very front of the lens is much smoother than the previous version, note that depending on the circumstance, it, it may or may not accomplish anything. STM does allow for full-time manual override. So that means that if you aren't satisfied with the focus that's locked in, as long as you keep your finger halfway down on the shutter button to enable that focus mode, it will allow you just to immediately to begin to produce your own focus. Then, of course, if you switch it into manual focus mode, you can uh, do the same. But if the camera is in standby or sleep mode, or in the case of when you have auto-focused, uh, if you're not holding that down, you can turn the manual focus ring and nothing will happen because there's no direct coupling between this ring and the lens elements inside the lens. In fact, it relies on a signal from the manual focus ring to be routed through the autofocus motor, the STM motor, and then it's the STM motor that actually moves those um, elements inside the lens. And so as a result, you just have to be aware that there may be some occasions where you're spinning that front dial and you can, you can spin it indefinitely. There is no stop at um, minimum or infinity focus. And so sometimes you can feel a little disoriented, but just know that either you have to have that halfway down for a focus to uh, achieve, or you need to switch into manual focus. And so um, just a couple of limitations. So there is a little bit of a disconnect feeling I find in the, the tactile sense of manual focus, but manual focus is not a point of emphasis on this type of lens. Um, on top of that, it does have an effective image stabilizer, and uh, that image stabilizer, it does a good job. It, it's uh, quite mannerly. I find that I'm able to handhold shots uh, down to about one-tenth of a second, and uh, just know that that has to be a static target if you're shooting something like that, because if there is any kind of movement of your subject, particularly at telephoto lim uh, lengths, it will really show some motion blur. But in terms of holding the actual... Um, are compensating for any kind of movement of the camera. It does an effective job. It also does a very effective job of stabilizing the viewfinder image, which makes it much easier to compose. This lens has a pretty incredible uh, focal length. It has basically a focal length equivalent of in a full frame of 80 millimeters up to a 400 millimeters, which is a pretty incredible amount of reach. And, and does so obviously in quite a compact body. To give you a visual comparison, uh, this is the 100 to 400 millimeter um, f4 to 5 points, or excuse me, f4.5 to 5.6 lens um, for a full frame body. It's a fantastic lens that I love a lot, but as you can see when it comes to the actual size comparison, it is uh, many times larger than what this lens is. And so this lens really gives you a pretty incredible amount of reach and a very lightweight package. In fact, it's even a, uh, a, just a few grams lighter than what its predecessor was. And, um, and so as a result, 
Um, it really is extremely lightweight. Its body is just a slight bit, a couple of millimeters longer than what its predecessors is. But when they are fully zoomed out, they're actually, uh, this lens is actually a hair shorter. And one of the, th the advantages that has come in this transition is that now the front element no longer rotates. Um, and so you're able to use a circular polarizer. Also, there is no uh, movement in and out when it comes to the actual focus process. And so the length of the lens doesn't change during focus, only when zooming. Both of those are extremely advantageous when it comes to the actual operation of the lens. The single biggest upgrade, however, is to, to me, is to the optical performance. The predecessor to this lens was okay optically. Um, if you're ever faced with an option of getting uh, the 55 to 250 compared to the older 70 to 300, the non-IS version, don't ever opt for that 70 to 300 millimeters. Uh, it has a little bit more reach, yes, but it is a, it's a very poor lens optically. I found that the 55 to 250, the predecessor of this, which was the IS Mark II, was definitely an upgrade over that lens. But this newest version really trounces the older lens. It really, the image quality is actually quite impressive. Across the frame, um, even into the corners, wide open image quality is very good. I no longer feel like I need to stop this lens down to f8 or smaller apertures to really get maximum image quality. And so that's certainly an advantage for a lens like this. Overall, I found the optical performance really to be quite good. Um, it, it doesn't really suffer from chromatic aberrations very strongly. Um, it... Uh, the distortion is really not pronounced, uh, in my opinion, for this. The one thing that I did find that the lens was guilty of is that if you put the sun right into the frame, it will do some veiling in which it loses some contrast and has that kind of washed out look that will come across it. But the, the kinds of situations where that occurs are actually fairly rare with a telephoto lens um, because by the time you are actually zoomed out to the telephoto end, end your angle of view is actually quite narrow, and so it's, it's not really difficult to keep the sun directly outside of the frame. Canon has persisted in not including a lens hood with its consumer grade lenses, which to me is an oversight, but I'll throw a couple of links down below, both to the official Canon hood, which is $24.99, I believe, but there's also, a B&H has a nice hood from Velo that is about half that price. And I think it's a worthy investment, both for the protection value and also since the lens is somewhat prone to um, veiling, but not ghosting, and ghosting is when you get kind of blobs of orange or green, you know, kind of spots that come when the sun's in the frame. It, it does fairly well with that, but it does do that veiling. And so the use of the lens hood is probably a good idea um, if you do actually use them. The overall build of the lens is, is okay. Um, there's nothing bad about it. Um, the overall design is nice and clean. It's, it's not a whole lot different than before, but the SDM lenses do have their own kind of distinct design. Um, it does persist in having a plastic lens mount as opposed to a metal lens mount. And with a lens that is this light, it's probably not a big deal. It's only a little over 300 grams, and so it's not a particularly heavy lens. Um, I should say it's 375 grams, but it's still very light, and so it's not putting a lot of stress on that mount. And so they've always had plastic mounts, and I've not heard of a lot of them breaking. I'm sure this one won't either. It's just my personal preference is to see that higher grade of the metal mount. Beyond that, uh, a couple of other things I want to highlight. This does have a very different new optical formula as compared to its predecessor. The, uh, the older lens, the IS Mark II, had 12 elements in 10 groups. This is a more complex 15 elements in 12 groups, and it certainly shows up in the improved image quality. One kind of thing that did stand out to me that was interesting is that while this lens does allow you to focus down more closely, 2.79 feet or 85 centimeters, um, compared to the predecessor was 3.6 feet or 1.1 meters, and so you can focus down more closely with this lens. However, the maximum magnification is a little bit less. Before it was 0 0.31 times, the new lens is rated at 0.29 at times. So that tells me that near that minimum focus, there is some focus breathing taking place in which the lens actually behaves as a shorter lens than its actual maximum focal length at infinity. That's very common in my experience with a number of new uh, lenses 
And, and often that's, it happens because of a floating element that the trade-off is, is that you actually get more sharp results near minimum focus. They actually focus better near minimum focus, but you lose a little bit of the magnification. Still, all things considered, that's a, a nice figure, nearly 0 0.30 times, and so it gives you a, a good amount of magnification, just falling under about a third life size. And so if you're shooting flowers or um, insects, butterflies, you should be able to fill the frame reasonably well and be happy with that. And um, as a few of these shots show, it does perform nicely at that minimum focus distance. Overall, um, the, the handling of this, there are things that remind you of it being a consumer grade. I have the, um, the EFM for EOS M system. It's a 55 to 200 millimeter lens and the build quality is just a little bit better on that lens. It has a little bit reduced a focal range, but it's overall optical performance and build quality is a little bit higher. But still, all things considered, this is a really worthy investment that gives you a lot of reach and of course pairs up perfectly with the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. And so uh, between those two lenses, you would have a reach from 18 millimeters to 250 millimeters in a, a lightweight, fairly portable package. And so that's a lot of reach and, and certainly a lot going for it. All in all, this is, a, this is a great upgrade over its predecessor, and there's really not a whole lot that I have to criticize about it. Um, it does a good job. The autofocus uh, works quite well. It's not as good, obviously, as the higher grade uh, USM lenses that have Canon's best autofocus system, but I found auto, autofocus performance to be reasonably fast and, and reasonably consistent, and so at the end of the day, I really don't have a whole lot to complain about here. And so as we head into the holiday season and the buying rush uh, this year, this may be a lens that is worthy of your consideration if you are looking for a budget telephoto option. I'm Dustin Abbott. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I've got a number of new videos that will be coming your way shortly, including by popular request, a look at what all is in my personal kit. And uh, those um, videos will be a, a series of those will be coming shortly. And so, thanks for watching. Have a great day.